Hey everyone, this is Randy from BibleBuyingGuide.com. Today I'm taking a look at the Cambridge KJV RV Interlinear Bible. This is an interesting little Bible that has uh, two different translations in it. And there's the back of the box. comes in the same clamshell box that Cambridge uses. So this thing is calfskin. I love the feel of this. It's soft to the touch. Paste down liner. So paste down. It has um, a nice grain, a nice feel to it. Pretty little Bible. It feels soft. It feels soft to the touch, but it's not overly floppy or anything like that. So it's not, it, it does have the card there, so it's not you know, really floppy. Um, let's see, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five spin spine ridges there with interlinear King James Version, revised version, and then the Cambridge seal. So this thing stays open like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's just amazing how, how easy that stays open. Serious. I mean, that is that is awesome. So there's that's a heavy card or a heavier paper, just like the end sheets presentation page. The interlinear Bible stays open. Easy, easy. You can see I've already got it crinkled a little bit. I've had this for a while. So we have the introduction to it, a little preface for it, for the interlinear. Information talking about how it's used, what it does, what it's for, etc., etc. Talks about the AV, which is the King James and the RV. Preface to the revisers of the Old Testament. And this does not have the epistle dedicatory of the King James or the uh, translators to the reader. It's, it's actually more focused on the RV than it is the KJV, although the complete KJV is here, other than the introduction, uh, other than the prefaces. It is all here. This paper, they call it India paper. It's not the old timey India paper that they used to make that was so awesome. Um, but this is not bad paper. It's being India paper, that means that it's under 30 GSM. I don't know what the GSM of this paid paper is. To my fingers, I would guess it to be about 27. It does get a little bit of page curl. It has a cream color, which I like a lot. I love the, the feel of it. But the, it, and it, it has a smooth texture. Not a really rough texture, but not, it's not coated, or at least it's not fully coated. Um, it has a little bit of a smooth texture, but it can be a little difficult to grab the pages and turn simply because of, of how thin it is. And you can see your opacity level here because of, of how thin it is. It's not quite as opaque as I'd want it. But it, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, ten point font, and then it's in paragraph format, which... I prefer paragraph format. It does have um, the uh, keys for the references in the text, and it has the keys for the footnotes. Footnotes are down here. So we have the, the RV footnotes across the top. It's, it's The footer has two sections. The, the top section is RV. The second section is AV, or King James. And so we have footnotes for both translations there. The references go from left to right across the columns. So you might have an A over here and a B over here and a C over here. You know, so it goes back and forth. But this keeps the references close to where they belong. And the letters for the references are indented. So that makes them easy to, to easier to find. So that's, that's a little bit easier. Now the references themselves are from the RV. And there are a lot of them. These are good references. There are a lot of them. And you can see the, the thing here about this Bible is the, the KJV and RV. So when you're reading it and you come across, your, you have your 10-point font here, and then you come across where the two translations diverge, the RV is placed on the top and the KJV is placed on the bottom. So in this case, you would read it. If you wanted to read the RV, you would say, and there was evening and there was morning. If you wanted to read the KJV, you would say, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So that's, that's how that, that works and how you read that. And these 
apply down here to the footnotes. Really clean text, dark font, consistently dark all the way through. I like it. Um, poetry is set in the poetic setting, or in stanzas. Even though it's still double column, it, it is easier to recognize that that's poetry. So that works really well. One that I was looking at this morning, actually, was Psalms 37, 8. I will zoom. Psalms 37, 8, where it says, Fret not. Now, if you're just reading it in the King James, which we actually did this morning, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And that doesn't quite make sense in the King James in, in our current understanding of language. So if you read it in the RV, it's fret not thyself, it lendeth or it tendeth only to evil doing. So th that will help you know, put a little bit of light on the text, which is the main purpose of this. Across the top we have the first verse that appears. Not the verse that starts on the page, but the first verse that appears on the page. So this is Psalms 36, verse 8. And then in the middle we have the book, and then on the, on the outer column we have the last verse that appears on the page. That's a little bit confusing. I do like that it has the first and the last. But I, I kind of like to have the name out here on the corner. Now you notice this is a wide margin edition. Wide margin Bible. However, being this thin of paper, for me it's a little bit difficult to write on this paper. It's not as opaque as I'd like it to be for a wide margin. It would, it would still good. It would, it's better than no wide margin, so it's still good. And then between the Testaments... We have the notes for the ASV, the American um, Revision Company, created their own notes that was that was to be considered for the revised version, and some of those were taken and some of those were not. Probably most were not. Those that were not are are actually back here, in between the test, you know, in between the Old and New Testament for the Old Testament notes. New Testament notes are in at the end of the New Testament. So these notes actually give you access to what the ASV became, which in reality now gives you three translations in this Bible. You have the King James, the Revised Version, and the ASV, American Standard Version. So their notes, they talk about words that they would prefer that you use, spellings that they preferred, um, I haven't seen punctuation, but there's probably some of that in there too. And then now we have the notes for each book of the Bible, which gives you the, the book name, the chapter, and then the verse. And then that gives you the note. And now in the New Testament, let's see, a good place to find this is Mark. You'll notice here Mark has the poetic setting, which most King James do not do this, and I prefer this. Um, as a reader, it's a little difficult because you've got all these distractions in the text. As a preaching Bible, it's a little difficult because you have all these distractions in the text. So I'm, I'm finding this difficult to read and preach from, just in general reading, but it's really good for study. But I do like that they did this poetic setting in the New Testament. So then, pretty much all the poetic settings in the New Testament are here. So I do like that a lot. I don't see any self-pronunciation markings. Uh, let's see, the font, it, it tells in the front what the font is. It's very similar to something like a New Times Roman. But it is a 10-point font. There's a poetic setting. It is a 10-point font here, and then it, this is about maybe a 5.5 or 6-point. It actually is clean and clear. It's easy to read if you don't have issues reading um, small text. Now where they diverge, it'll be a spelling of a name. It'll be uh, where words are not in one text, but they're in the other. It will be uh, punctuation differences. It'll be word choice differences. Sometimes it's just sentence structure differences. So of course this is a Smythe song. 
Smithsonian edition with uh, red and gold head tail bends. Has two ribbons. Um, do you see how small those are? Those ribbons are not that useful. I'd almost rather not even have ribbons, to be honest. They're not that useful. But this thing does lay open really well. It reads really well, and there's some of the features in the back. Once we get past the book of Revelation, we have the New Testament notes for the ASV. Then we have the Bible Companion. The Bible Companion is a 12-month reading plan. We'll do a little quick zoom here and see what we got. So it shows you the month. It's a table that shows you the month, gives you the book name, the date, and the chapters to read for that date. So it takes you through the Bible in biblical order in one year. And then we have index to notes. So we have a page for every letter of the alphabet. Blank page. Do what you want to on that page. These are really good for, for um, creating an index for your notes. And it's also good for if you wanted to do something like um, a, a topic that starts with a certain letter that you're making list of scriptures for that topic or definitions of words that start with that letter like alpha or something along that line. So you have these 26 letters and then you also after that have four pages that are not labeled. So total you have around 30 pages there for for this kind of note. And then we go into and this is the same kind of paper as as the regular Bible. So 27, 28 GSM, whatever that happens to be. I don't actually know, but it's in that range. But that's the same kind of paper. This is notebook paper, much thicker paper. That's probably 40-something GSM or maybe even better. I, I don't know. But two columns of, line, of lines, ruled pages, 64 pages for notes. And then we have our list O maps, 15 maps, 16 pages of 15 maps, with a map index. Now, this is not the new color-coded map index, but it's still a good map index. There's a lot in here, a lot of good stuff in here. And this is the thicker paper. And then we go into our maps. So we have the biblical world of patriarchs. And this shows distance, routes, water, some, some topography. I love the colors in these maps. Some of my favorite colors in maps. This is non-shiny paper, no glare whatsoever. Really good maps, really good paper. We have some dates on here. There are some dates. Really good maps. I like these. Some topography. So that one's got some scripture references on it. These are the same maps that I've that I have in my older Concord in modern Israel. And then a few in sheets. These are not super thick in sheets, but they're good. So, really nice little Bible. And you know, I do find it difficult just to read as a reader, and I also find it difficult as a preaching Bible, and I've tried both. Um, let's see. Some Bibles, including the, the KJV Clarion, will place uh, a lot of the, of the uh, prophets in poetic setting. This one does not. But it is in paragraph setting. So Ezekiel, Isaiah, none of this is in poetic setting. Jeremiah, no, no poetry there. Isaiah, it's all just normal paragraph. Right now I'm having no issues at all turning pages. So it probably won't have much issues turning pages. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more opaque, and I wouldn't mind if it was thicker paper. Now, if you're wanting a wide margin edition, you're probably better off with this one. If, if wide margin is your only goal. This is the Cambridge Concord wide margin. They're about the same size. Just about the same. Almost. Almost the same. But where this one has a 10 point font, the Concord has an eight-point font. And where this is paragraph, the Concord is verse by verse. Now, this is 38 GSM paper. This is paper made to be written on. So this is a better choice for just for notes, if that's your goal. Both are black letter. This one has a concordance, whereas this one does not. 
this one has a glossary. This one doesn't need the glossary so much. Here's your glossary. This doesn't have it, but it doesn't need it so much because you have the RV in here, which will update some of the words anyway. I like this wide margin concordance because you can make add entries or you can make definitions or whatever. Now this one also has the paper. It's the same paper. Same paper. And it also has the index to notes. This uses the same paper as the Bible, which is 38 GSM. And then we have our maps. This is the newer updated maps with the updated color-coded uh, in the uh, index to maps. But they're very similar. So if if having a wide margin is your goal, I think this is a better choice simply because of the um, the, the thicker paper. But this is a good one for study because of the interlinear. I do like the way this interlinear is done. I do like that. Now, the leather itself is really nice. It's soft, silky soft, and smooth. So I can figure out how to read my, my little scale here. So we're looking at about nine and a half by seven and a quarter, and it's an inch and a half thick. This leather, the closest thing that I've seen to this leather is the Westminster from Trinitarian Bible Society. It has about the same thickness, about the same feel. This, this might be a touch softer. This one might be. Uh, very similar grain. This actually has a little bit more grain than this does. But that's the closest I've seen to it. But that's a really nice Bible. So I will paste a, uh, a link underneath here so that you can see more information about it at BibleBuyingGuide.com. Cambridge did provide this in exchange for a written review and I am throwing in a video review just because because I'm doing that now and this does have art gilt edges so I will post a link in the notes so that you can see more photos and more detail about this Bible on BibleBuyingGuide.com thanks for watching